In this video, I'm going to cover part A of the grade 11 functions exam that I have posted on the PB Wiki site. I'll put a link to it in the description of this video for you. So um, first I want to give a little disclaimer here in that this is an exam that I made for my class. Now your teacher might have different subjects that they emphasized more or um, most teachers would probably give you a fairly decent outline of, of what you need to prepare for the exam. But uh, my exam pretty much covers a little bit of everything to make sure my students understood the basics of the grade 11 course. And finally, um, you should note that there's no finance section on my exam because I use that as part of their summative. So I didn't need to evaluate it for a third time. So let's go over the part A here. Um, then when I get more time, I'll do part B for you. And again, you can download this at the PB Wiki site. Okay, so each question is one mark. Uh, most teachers like to do this sort of thing. It's quick and easy to mark, and it shows whether or not you understand uh, really basic grade 11 skills. So it says, if f at x equals 5x squared minus 2, determine f at minus 3. Now remember that f at minus 3, this is function notation. If you have to go back and look at how that all worked. But essentially what it means is that where I have an x, I'm going to plug in a minus 3. So the calculation will be 5 bracket minus 3 squared. So always plug in your x value in brackets or else you'll most likely make a sign error. Okay, so I have minus 3 squared and negative times negative, of course, is a positive. So that gives me 45. 9 times 5 is 45 minus 2, and my answer is going to be 43. Really bad format here. You never put two equal signs on one line, right? For the given periodic relation, state the period, the amplitude, and the value of F11. So the period means how long before it starts to repeat again. And from this, I can see that it went up, down to the axis, up, down to the axis. So you can measure it from here to here, or even easier, you can go peak to peak or trough to trough. Peak to peak here is really easy to see because it goes from zero to five. So the period is five. There's no other units given, so we'll just say it's five. The amplitude is the height of the function. So from the lowest to the highest, so this goes from minus two to plus four, so the amplitude is 6. And part C, the value of f11, assuming the relation continues in the same manner. So I want to know, what would the height of the function be when I'm at 11? So from the start of where this would be starting off again, you can see it goes, uh, goes up over 2, it goes up to 4. So up 2 goes up 1, 2, 3, 4. So it's going like this, right? And then it's coming back down. So I want to know what the value is going to be here. Now, you don't have to sketch it. You can just say, okay, well, that's from the start would be one, two, three units over. So I can go here and go one, two, three units and go up till I find the point right here. So it's going to be one. F at 11 would be one. Uh, number three, evaluate 8 to the minus 5 thirds. Express your answer as a fraction in simplified form. Make sure you read the directions carefully on the exam. Take your time. You always have plenty of time to do your exams, even more than we used to give. So this 8 to the minus 5 thirds is what is the cube root of 8? Cube root of 8 is 2. 2 to the power of 5 would be 32. And the negative sign means 1 over that number. So 1 over 32. If I'm doing something and you don't understand it, make sure you go back to the section on um, in the videos that I've posted to find how to work with negative exponents. Number four, given the square root of x minus 5, state the domain and the range. So I would probably just sketch this little thing, right? What is x minus 5, the root of it? So the square root function, as you recall, just goes like this. So x minus 5, so all the transformations you work you've done in this course, you should know that that means that the function moves to the right 
five units. So one, two, three, four, five. Let's put it here. And it's the very same function over here. Now that might help you to sketch it. Now if you didn't sketch it, you would say, okay, well, what value would I put in here to get zero for y? Because that is... I can't have a negative under the radical sign, right? That's a restriction. You can't take the square of a negative number. So the largest or the smallest number I can put in for x would be 5 because 5 minus 5 would be 0, square root of 0, 0. So that's this point here. So the domain means it has to start. It's all the x values, remember. Domain is x. So I'd say domain is equal to the set of all x's such that x is greater than or equal to 5 and x is an element of real numbers. There's your domain. Now the range, capital R, so the range is going to be my y values, and you can see from the graph that y has to be greater than or equal to 0, because when I put in 5 here, I got the square root of 0 is 0. So y is greater than or equal to 0, and y is an element of real numbers. So the range, again, that just means what are the y values, that we get for this function and the domain is what are the x values that we can use and get a solution. Number five, give the exact value, the exact value. Now anytime you see this word in um, on your test, this is trigonometry of course, secant of 30 degrees, an exact value means use your special triangles. So remember the special triangles with a 30 degree in came from um, an equilateral triangle. And so we cut it in half. This was two, this is cut in half, so that's one. And this would be the square root of three. You need to make sure you can sketch those out. I doubt your teacher is going to give you the values. So this is going to be 60 degrees here and 30 over here. Now secant, remember, a secant is 1 over the cos. So secant of 30 degrees equals 1 over the cos of 30 degrees. So the cos of 30 would be adjacent over hypotenuse. The secant would be the hypotenuse over the adjacent. So that's going to give me 2 over square root 3. Now your teacher may ask you to rationalize the denominator. If you remember that you would multiply top and bottom by root 3. I don't know. Maybe uh, it's not important for your teacher. So my final answer would be 2 root 3 over 3. Or I would give, um, I would just give this answer here. 2 over root 3. Okay. Number 6. Write the simplified form simplified rational form of this with positive exponents. Okay, read carefully. Okay, so this number here, first thing we want to do is look at the values in front, the numbers in front, or the coefficients here. So I have minus 14 over 42. 14 goes into 42 three times. So that means I'm going to write, I'm going to write it out over here again because I, I'm a little bit I like to see my map as I'm doing it. So I have 42 over a to the fourth b squared c cubed. Okay, so I can simplify this. That's going to give me minus 1 over 3. Now my a's have 9 in the top and 4 in the bottom. So remember your um, exponent rules. The bases are the same. You subtract the exponents. So that's going to give me a to the 5, 9 minus 4 b, 2, b squared over b squared, those just cancel out. And c over c cubed, that would give me c to the negative 2. Or maybe you would see right away that you'd have to put this one into this one down here. So if I have this, that's okay. And then I can simplify it. So minus an a to the fifth. And to make this c positive, I just throw it in the denominator. And there's my final solution right there. Okay, state the restrictions. Well, this is an easy one. Restrictions are what values in the denominator would make this undefined. And you know that for any rational expression, the denominator can never be zero. So x can not be equal to, don't say x is equal to. Sometimes students write that. 
you say it's not equal to, it's a restriction. X cannot be equal to zero or what makes this little bracket zero? A three. So there's two restrictions. Sometimes people make, um, forget this one here, that's important. So zero and three. Number eight, determine the value of X that would make the following sequence arithmetic. X minus four, six, X. Now, if you look at that, you might say, oh, I don't know, but you, you do know something, and that is that it's arithmetic. And arithmetic means that the common difference between your values is going to be the same, right? The common difference is the same. So the difference means this one minus this one has to be equal to this one minus this one. So I'm going to say six minus x minus four has to be equal to x minus six. So what I'm doing is I'm saying this minus this is equal to this minus this. Let's look at something really simple just so you remember what I'm talking about here. Let's say I had a basic one, say it's two, four, six, dot, dot, dot. So you know that the common difference is this one minus this one, right? Four minus two was two, six minus four was two. So in this case here, I have an unknown though, so I'm going to write it as x minus, x minus four, so this minus this term and x minus six. So if you simplify this, I'd have six minus x plus four equals x minus six. I'm gonna bring this x over to this side because that way they're positive. So I'm gonna have six plus four is 10. I'm going to bring this six over here, so I add six. And here I'm going to have x plus an x, so that's 2x. So 16 equals 2x, so that means that x is equal to 16 divided by 2, or 8. The next term of the sequence, 1, 3, 7, 15, is... Okay, now notice they didn't say arithmetic or geometric. This is just a sequence, so it's just a pattern, right? So let's look at the pattern. So we go from 1 to 3, so that's plus 2. We go from 3 to 7, that was plus 4, and then we go plus 8. So I'm adding 2, 4, 8 will be the next thing I would add. I have to double this one, right? So it's going to be 15 plus 8 times 2 is 16, so my answer is 31. Okay. Now this question here continues on the next page, so let's read it first. It says a point on the graph of y equals f of x is 8 and minus 3. The coordinates of the corresponding image point, let's turn the page here, on the graph of 2 f of x are. Okay, so let me write it up here. I'll write what the question said here. y equals f of x has a point 8 and minus 3. So this is like mapping rules, right? I want to know if I had this point, what would it be if I doubled the f and x? Okay, so I'm going to write a mapping rule out here just to help you remember it. You might be able to do this all in one step. So let's say x and y are going to go to, what do I have to do to my x's? Nothing. I do absolutely nothing. So I say x and 2 f of x, that means 2 times my y's. So 8, 3 would become 8 and 6. 8 and 6. So that's my first one. On the graph of f at x plus 2, okay, so my mapping rule would say, um, what do I do to my x's? It says x plus 2. Do you remember the x's are weird? It says plus 2, you're going to subtract 2. So x minus 2, and I do nothing to the y. There's no change to the y at all. So 8 minus 2 is going to give me 6, and y is just 3. On the graph of f negative 1x, what does this mean? That's not a mapping rule. F negative 1x, it doesn't mean 1 over it. It means the inverse, right? This means inverse. The inverse of 8, 3 is simply 3 and 8. Remember, the x becomes the y and the y becomes the x. Done. Okay, now some little sequence questions. Given the sequence 2, 6, 10, 
state the next term. Well, you have to decide if it's arithmetic or geometric. And to do that, you would look at, well, we'll start with arithmetic. 6 minus 2, 4. 10 minus 6, 4. Okay, it's arithmetic. So my d value here, d is equal to 4. I'm adding 4 every time, right? And my a was 2. So 2 plus 4 is 6, plus 4 is 10, plus 4 is 14. State the recursive formula. Oh, I had to look this up because I'd forgotten about recursive formula. It's not something you use a lot. So the recursive formula, remember, has to do with tn. So the nth term is equal to the first term. And what do I do? Um, what do I do with the first term? What do I do to it? I added 4. Now, let me explain why I put tn minus 1. That's because this is talking about the recursive uh, form talks about the sequence in terms of the previous term, right? So it's not like starting from A. It says I take this term here, which is going, I, I have to explain a little more in one second here. So we say T and I'm adding four to it. And my N value has to be greater than one. Because if I had t1 minus 1, I'd have the 0 term, right, which doesn't exist. So n is greater than 1. And the first term is 2. Because I have to say, what is my, my n is greater than 1, so I have to put in a 2 here. So 2 minus 1 is the first term plus 4. So the second term would be the first term plus 4. And the first term is 2. And finally, we also have to say that n is an element of natural numbers. Why natural numbers? Because we're talking about 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, right? We're not talking about integers. They have to be whole numbers. You can't have a one and a half term. It has to be the a number, a natural number. State the 3,007th term. Well, to do that, you need a formula. So remember that, I'm just going to write it right here. So Tn equals A plus N minus 1 times D. Your teacher might give you these formulas on the exam. I would have. But then I'm just a nice teacher. Um, so the A value. So let's say, what is the 3007th term? That's going to be A. I know what A is. A is the first term, which is 2, plus 3,007 minus 1 times D. And I said D was 4 because I'm adding 4. That's your common difference. And if you do the math for that, it becomes 2 plus 12,024. So I made it a really difficult number because I didn't want people doing it in their head wanted to see if they knew the formula. So 12,026. Okay? Now simplify each of the following. x to the 5 fourths times x to the 3 quarters. The exponent rules, you know if you're multiplying and the bases are the same, you add the exponents. So that's equal to x to the 8 over 4. Now that's not simplified, right? I can write that a little better. So that's x squared. Y to the two-thirds to the half. The two-thirds to the half, this is power to another power, which means we multiply. So I get Y to the two over six, which equals Y to the one over three. And the next one, three-quarters to the negative two. Don't get freaked out by the negative exponents. When it's a fraction and you have a negative exponent, all you have to do is flip this over. So that's the same as 4 over 3 squared because it's 1 over it, right? So I'm dividing, flip, and multiply. So 4 thirds squared, that would be 16 over 9. And you can't simplify that any more than that. Okay, number or letter D here of number 12. 4 to the negative 1 plus 2 to the negative 3. Now these type of questions, you have to write them out as fractions and simplify. So 4 to the negative 1 is 1 quarter. 
and 2 to the negative 3 is 1 over 2 cubed, which is 8. And now I need a common denominator, so I have to multiply top and bottom here by 2. 1 quarter is 2 eighths, whoops, plus 1 eighth gives me 3 over 8, and that's your answer. And the last question from part A, and I'll do part B in a second video here for you. The square root of 72, write as a mixed radical in lowest terms. So, so the root of 72 is the same thing as the root of, now you're looking for the largest perfect square number that's in 72, and that would be 36, right? 36 times the root of 2. So the root of 36 is 6, square root 2. Okay, so that's it for part A. I'll uh, continue part B as soon as I get a chance to get to it, and I promise to do it in the next few days, so you'll have it to study with. All the best on your exams. Please subscribe so I know how many people are actually wa watching the videos. I'm getting over 500 people every 48 hours, so there's a lot of you who haven't subscribed yet. And besides, then you'll know when I post the next video. Bye for now.